Sonic, the heart of your system. Hi and welcome to a new and also quite unusual video, at least for my channel, because typically I don't really feature notebooks that much. But from last year, when I was traveling so much with Mary, especially when we were visiting all those exhibitions and doing a lot of video production, not from home, being um, somewhere in a hotel or whatever, then gaming notebooks are really quite useful when you're like cutting videos with Adobe Premiere. Gaming notebooks are usually the way to go because they have very strong GPUs which are necessary for the live playback if you're just watching let's say the 4K video while cutting process and then you also need a strong CPU for the rendering process in the end because this is typically always uh, performed by the CPU itself. And most of you know that I'm not only doing YouTube and also working for Case King, I'm also part owner of Thermal Grizzly, which you probably know from most of the like, Gamers Nexus interviews and all that kind of stuff. And from, I think, early this year, we've been working together with HP on this notebook because this is probably the first gaming notebook that was commercially and in mass production using liquid metal on the CPU. And in today's video, we will just open this thing and take a look at the CPU itself, see how it looks like if like mechanically mass production liquid metal was applied to a notebook, how they applied it on the CPU. Also take a closer look at, let's say, the dual screen thing and a quick look at the performance as well. The HP Omen X2S comes with a Core i7 9750H. It's not a K CPU, unfortunately, so you cannot overclock the CPU technically, but you can do a lot of things with XTU. Pretty much everything is unlocked, so you can touch the power limit, for example. Stock power limit is set to 45 watt, but you can unlock it to even 300 if you want to. It doesn't do anything because cooling wise, you cannot cool 300 watt uh, in such a notebook, but um, you can adjust it to like 50 to 55 watt, which can give you like 5 to 7% performance increase. That's something you can do. You can take a look at if you own this thing. Then we have 32 gigabyte of memory in here. What's also quite interesting is that we have two M.2 drives in there, one terabyte each. You can see crystal disk mark was just performed right here. About 3200 megabyte per second read, about 2800 megabyte per second write. That could be higher, of course, considering it's two M.2 drives in RAID 0. Not sure what kind of M.2 drives they were using. We will obviously open this thing in a bit and just take a look at what's exactly inside. Always with RAID 0, M.2, keep in mind that you have double the risk having two M.2 drives in RAID 0 because if one fails, all your data from the second drive is also gone. Then we have an RTX 2080 Max-Q, so the mobile version of the RTX 2080, which is still sufficient if you're doing even 4K video editing. It's fine, it's not the smoothest play play uh, playback, but it's quite good to use. Frequency-wise, the 6-core CPU typically hits 3100 to 3500 in multi-core applications, so Adobe Premiere rendering, Cinebench R15, all those kinds of very heavy workloads will end up with like 31, 3200 to 3500 megahertz on the CPU, while the single-core boost is listed with up to 4.5 gigahertz. In reality, you don't really hit it that often if you do a single core benchmark. Typically, it's more like 4200 to 4400 doing Cinebench R15 single. The main feature of the Omen X2S is obviously the secondary screen. And the secondary screen is just as a second monitor you would attach to your notebook. Doesn't matter what kind of function you're having right here, you can always swap it easily using this key right here. What you just saw is the Omen Command Center. The Omen Command Center is now in my uh, primary screen. If I push this button again, it will just be flipped down to the secondary screen. You can do the same, for example, if you're just using Core Temp while running a benchmark. You can use Core Temp at the same time. The second display is also a touchscreen display, so you can cycle through different functions, for example, different power profiles. I really like how this is or how it looks very integrated with the Omen Command Center. It just looks like it belongs there, even though the screen is a little bit small. The screen could be wider. I think it would look much cooler if it was wider. But my main view, the one I like really much, is like CPU um, usage, temperature, and also, um, for example, memory usage. Right now, you can see download, upload speed of your network. So that's quite cool. You can change, for example, the color of your notebook. You can go through some additional settings of your monitor and all that kind of stuff. So I think that's quite useful having this as a secondary screen. For example, during gaming, you could have Discord here or TeamSpeak or yeah, I don't know, you could watch a YouTube video even if you want to. 
I just switched over to the performance profile on the Omen command center right here. And now we will perform a Cinevention multi-run. Take a look at the performance. Multi-core performance almost 1200 points in R15 while single core run is still running. You see the maximum core temperature in multi was 89 degrees Celsius, which I think is fine considering what kind of performance we get out of this notebook with 1200 points in multi. During the single core run we can just take a look at the monitoring of the Omen command center, see between 15 and 20 percent CPU usage right here with a temperature of about 71 degrees Celsius, 25 percent memory usage, obviously no usage right here on the network speed, but I think this is a quite cool view during a benchmark run. 166 points in single core performance, which I think is quite solid, considering that we're seeing about 200 to 210 in a nowadays high-end desktop system. One thing I dislike, when you want to open it, you have to use a very small Torx key, because yeah, this is using Torx, which is something not everybody has at home, so I think HP kind of wants people not to open this thing, but here we go. Some small advertising in between. I can really recommend those iFixit opening essential electronic toolkits. Really, really helpful when you're trying to opening something like this. Opening this thing was not quite that easy, but it worked. First thing I noticed is that there is this thermal pad right here that makes contact with uh, the M.2 SSDs that are sitting right here. And underneath there is also in addition a small sheet of copper, I think, to spread the heat from the M.2 drives on this backplate. Quickly removing the M.2 drives first, those appear to be Western Digital SN720 NVMe drives, one terabyte each. Two SODIMs from ADATA, 16 gigabyte each, populated on both sides. 3200 MHz sticks, so quite good performance per stick for a notebook. The heatsink itself looks also quite interesting. We have one big fan here on the left and one big fan on the right. They're connected over this massive heat pipe that goes through the middle. The left part is the CPU part. We have this small additional heatsink going to the CPU. Two heatsinks going away from the GPU, so it looks like yeah, the right part definitely is for a higher power consumption and heat dissipation, but for example, if the CPU is not used, the additional heat pipe here helps to spread the heat from example from the GPU to the CPU side or vice versa. This is how the heatsink looks like from underneath. Yeah, you can straight see this is the area where the liquid metal is applied for the CPU and what's extremely well made is that this part is nickel plated copper and that was one of the most critical points that notebook manufacturers had to realize they cannot use naked copper because naked copper and liquid metal or gallium itself is always a problem. There can always be some kind of uh, corrosion effects or that the gallium goes inside the copper itself and that's prevented by using nickel plating which you can see is very well made right here. We have some thermal pads going on the MOSFETs of the CPU from the notebook. We have the GPU area right here, naked copper but with conventional thermal paste. Some thermal pads for the memory of the GPU, also thermal pads right here for the MOSFETs again. This is how HP solved the issue of having liquid metal in mass production on a notebook. A lot of people are afraid if they replace conventional thermal paste with liquid metal on a notebook that if they use too much, like in this case, they're afraid that the liquid metal kind of squeezes out to the side. And HP solved this by using some double-sided adhesive tape, just placing it on the CPU right here, making contact to the heatsink, and then it's kind of sealing off between the CPU itself and the heatsink, and that's how no liquid metal can make its way out underneath the CPU. That's very well or cool solution for mass production. And uh, yeah, you can see the MOSFETs and the VRMs right here of the CPU. Those are five phases, could be some four plus one VRM solution. Not entirely sure what the setup is right here. We see the GPU on the right side, the RTX 2080 with the memories 
outside here, also with the MOSFETs here. What's kind of interesting is this, not really sure what exactly this is. Looks kind of like a graphite sheet, but wouldn't really make sense to place it here. I'm not entirely sure what this is. Maybe you have an idea what those strange looking sheets right here are. If you know, please put it down in the comments below. But that's how yeah, HP made the Omen X2S for mass production with liquid metal on a CPU. That's the end of our quick journey into the gaming notebook segment. I think it's quite interesting if we see some kind of solutions like this where manufacturers risk to go into new directions and having liquid metal or conductor out in mass production in especially gaming notebooks that say three to four thousand euro. I think it's quite cool to see that they also try to get the maximum performance out of the out of the machine. You don't have to modify it yourself. You don't have to apply liquid metal manually. That's why I think technically this is a very interesting thing and I will personally probably use this in future for traveling and using it for video cutting, video editing when we're somewhere visiting exhibitions. Let me know what you think about this very specific and more technical I don't want to call it notebook review because it's not really a review, but just checking out new technologies and stuff I think it's quite interesting, but still anyway, let me know what you think about this type of video. Thanks for joining in and see you next time